let me read the, this question here. It says uh, nitrogen um, with some mass. Okay, uh, let's see what do I do here. So let me just say label this as mass. Uh, it travels at some speed. Seems high, but well, that's the number they're giving me. Perpendicular to a uh, one tesla. Okay, that's my magnetic field, which makes it move in a circular arc with some radius r. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna have to diagram this. Um, um, so it looks like I'm trying to say this is positive charge. All right. So uh, let me draw the magnetic field. Sorry, I'm doing trying to do this in my head. If we cross. Uh, we cross uh, B, so wait. Uh, so my magnetic field is like either going to point out of page or into page. So, okay, let me do it this way. Um, if my magnetic field points into the page, so this will be the arrangement of magnetic field. I'm just drawing a few arrows, but they are meant to be, uh, it's meant to be uniform across the whole region. And let's say I have a charged particle of some mass and charge Q that's moving to the right into the magnetic field or in the magnetic field. This is kind of a snapshot of this charge at a moment in time. So as it's moving to right, uh, we cross um, B pointing into, okay. Um, I want to, yeah, let me just move this down a little bit so that I have room to draw. Okay, so with V cross B, this uh, charge feels an upward force. Let me just double check to be sure. So V cross B into the screen, uh, the, the force is upward. Okay, so as this charge moves in this magnetic field, this is going to bend upward. And this is the th thing to remember about magnetic force, that at this position of the charge, it is moving this way. The force is still perpendicular, pointing into some center of this circle. That's why it's saying, which makes it move in a circular arc with some radius. The, the force from a static magnetic field naturally leads into a circular motion. Um, I think at the beginning of the semester, I told you that we'll be using um, cir uniform circular motion, things you learned from uniform circular motion, and this is it. So let me just uh, indicate in the drawing that path of the particle. It's uh, uh, bending in some circular arc, and we are saying that center of the circle is here, and the radius of the circle r is uh, the radius that's given. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, yeah. And given a region that's uh, large enough, this will complete this circular path and come back. We actually have a lab that does exactly that setup. So the question asks, what is the amount of positive charge on the ion? Um, I, I don't think it gave us anything about the amount of charge. And as you are looking at it, I hope you get the, this sense here. You are given enough information to figure out the force or the magnetic force through the expression that magnetic force is charge times V cross B. You are given information about the velocity of the charge. You are given information about the magnetic field. Okay, you are not given Q, but you do want to involve Q in your expressions to be able to solve it. So somehow, if you could figure out the amount of force, then you would be on path to figuring out Q. And this is where it's important to remember the things from Physics 4A when we covered uniform circular motion for something moving in a circular arc with some radius. Um, you, were, you learned this, that the centripetal acceleration for something moved, undergoing uniform circular motion the centripetal acceleration is given by V squared over R. Or th this will give you the net force. The centripetal force is given by mass 
times v squared over r. And in this situation, if I were to draw a free body diagram, uh, there's really only one force on this charge, the magnetic force. Yeah, there's either no other force or we are neglecting those other forces. So from your recalling of this information about the center, uh, uniform circular motion, you can figure out, ah, the magnitude of this magnetic force must be given by the centripetal force, mv squared over r. And as you stare at this expression, I hope you see that left-hand side, um, everything is given. We know that we are given the mass, uh, we are given the speed of v, it's the same v, uh, and we are given r. So we know everything on the left-hand side. We just don't know the one quantity on the right-hand side, so we can solve for it. So let me write down a simplified version of this expression here. We can um, work out something. So on the left-hand side, I already wrote down the magnitude of the force. So let me just write it down, mv squared over r. And for the right-hand side, even though I wrote it as a vector expression, really what we care about is the magnitude because the, the vector direction will change as it undergoes the circular motion. So what we want to look at is the magnitude. So as you look at the magnitude of this um, of this force so it says the uh, yeah, travels at this speed perpendicular to the magnetic field so if you remember the cross product the magnitude of v cross b is magnitude of v times magnitude of b times the sine of theta so 90 degrees sine of theta is one so we can say for the right hand side the magnitude is Q times the speed times the magnitude of magnetic field B. So it's a quite simple expression. We can cancel out some things that cancel out and we can solve for Q. Uh, move B over to the other side. Then you get Q is equal to mv over B times R. I think everything on the right hand side here is um, something you can just uh, uh, plug in and yeah let's do that it looks like we are given all the numbers in the basic SI unit so um, I think I can just plug in the numbers and it'll give me something in the basic SI unit of Coulomb so let me bring up my calculator Oops. okay <laughs> calculator and just uh, plug in the numbers here um, mass 2.325 times the 10 to the power of uh, minus 26 kilogram times the velocity 5.5 times 10 to the power of 6 meter per second divided by 1 tesla which is actually a quite large magnetic field and again divided by the radius 0.399 Okay, and if I did everything right, the units should work out to be um, should should work out to be in coulombs. So I have a three point two zero times ten to the power of minus nineteen coulomb. So we are, I can just read off the mantissa there, three point two zero. So the amount of charge on the ion is three point two zero times ten to the minus nineteen coulomb. And uh, for part B, it's uh, asking how many electrons does this charge correspond to? And I think I remember this number, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 is the elementary charge. So this would account for two of those electrons. So let's plug in the numbers and see. Uh, 3.20 and two electrons. So yeah, that's it. Um, it's a, this is a quite common, uh, well, I don't know if I would say simple, but it's, a, um, well, it's an uncomplicated. It's quite un uncomplicated and quite common experimental setup. Uh, it's, a, um, it's, and uh, yeah, yeah. And this exact setup is used to drive something called a cyclotron frequency, which is, uh, has very useful applications in different um, areas of physics research.